When it comes to instilling fear, you want a weapon that's so terrifying, its very presence frightens the enemy into submission. Chamber right, 10 seconds. You're facing all out war and you don't want to engage your troops. You can't go nuclear, but you want the same destructive power without the radioactive fallout. What do you do? There is a solution. It's one of the most destructive weapons ever created. Why, it's clear to drop. What's needed is a precision bomb so powerful that it paralyzes the enemy with fear. The U.S. Air Force has such a weapon, and its time came as Operation Iraqi Freedom began. The designers were looking to demonstrate the power of their new super bomb. The U.S. needed to send a clear message to Baghdad. Moab is the largest guided weapon ever built. That is what makes it so destructive. It's 30 feet long, and it's packed with over 18,000 pounds of high explosive. There's the drop point. The overall weapon weighs about 21,700 pounds. That's nine and a half tons of sheer hell. The high explosive carries an exotic mix of tritonal and fuel so powerful it can reduce a downtown area to dust. Its proper title is the Massive Ordnance Air Blast. And it's truly massive. Mortar rounds carry a charge of two pounds. Their effective blast radius to kill or shatter concrete is two yards. The howitzer round with 20 pounds of high explosive has a blast radius of five yards. A 2,000 pound bomb has a blast radius of 25 yards. That's the size of a city block. Before the arrival of Moab, the biggest conventional bomb was the notorious Blue 88, used in Vietnam. Packed with 15,000 pounds of explosive, it has a blast radius of 100 yards. But the Moab dwarfs everything. Carrying a lethal cocktail of high explosive, it has an effective blast area of 150 yards. Good job. What makes Moab so incredibly destructive? Moab is the largest guided weapon ever built. Additionally, because of the precision guidance that it employs, we're able to put that large explosive dead on to a target. What makes it an air burst weapon? When the fuses hit the ground, the fuse trains start to up these extenders and into the main cavity where the explosive is. So what's gonna happen is the main charge here will go off before it actually hit, impacts the ground. And what kind of damage does an air burst do versus a ground burst? What you're not doing is you're not digging the hole and you're not uh, throwing up debris. What you're doing is you're causing a blast about to start up about three feet off the ground and go out from there. And that shockwave is one of the most valuable components about why the Moab is so effective. That shockwave is the primary kill mechanism for the Moab, right? 